This is my new racing drone for the 2021 season, and I'm super excited because it has Immersion RC Ghost in it, <laughs> and it has a Tramp video transmitter in it. And when you put Immersion RC Ghost and Tramp together, you gain access to a way of managing your video transmitter that is probably more convenient and safer than what you're doing now. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. Before we get into this video, I need to tell you that TBS Crossfire has a function called MyVTX that is almost the same as what I'm about to show you that Immersion RC Ghost can do. And I'm telling you about that now because number one, I know a whole bunch of people are gonna go to the comments and ask me about it. I wanna let you know, I have a video about MyVTX. It's already recorded, it's already edited, and it will be coming out on my channel very soon. Make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell so you don't miss it. No need to go to the comments and ask me about my, my on with the video. There's two ways to wire up your video transmitter. One is the way that you're probably doing it now, where you wire the video transmitter to the flight controller. You go into the ports tab and you set up smart audio or tramp telemetry as one of your UARTs. You go to the video transmitter tab and you set up the VTX tables. And then you can manage the video transmitter through your on-screen display in the goggles, through the Betaflight video transmitter tab, and so on. That is not what we're talking about in this video. And if you have ever struggled to get VTX tables working, then you're going to be like, yes, that sounds great to me. So here we are in the menu and you can see, of course, I can change the channel, the band and the output power of the video transmitter. And you might be a little confused right now because my video transmitter isn't powered up. So how is this even going to work? This is one of the cool things about this function. Whatever I changes I make here, so for example, let's say I say I, I want to power up and be on uh, race band one at, uh, you know what? Let's just power up on race band one, but not actually power up. Let's just set the power to be off because I don't want to power up and blast anybody. Any changes that I make in this menu and then I hit send, as soon as the quadcopter powers up, it will instantly take these changes. So let's go ahead and move this uh, screen to channel race one and let's power up the quad and see what happens. N nothing happened because I set the power to off. I was confused there. I thought I had screwed up. I forgot. I set the power to off, so nothing happened. Yeah, that makes total sense. So let's change the power to uh, one milliwatt. That would be for like pit mode, traditional pit mode, where you can only see the signal if you're within a few feet of it. And then we could change it to, let's change it to 25 milliwatts and send. Boom. There we are. Now, I want to reiterate one of the coolest freaking things about this system. Uh, which is that I can make these changes in the ghost module with my quadcopter powered off. And then after I power up, they will take effect. You never have to think about, did I remember to change this video transmitter on this quad to the correct channel? You show up at the race or you show up at the, at the fly-in, you get your channel assignment from whoever's managing channels. You put your ghost module on the channel that you're supposed to be on. Go to race eight. Okay. And then every quad you power up after then, just instantly, is on the right channel at the desired power output. It's pretty freaking slick. Now, as a reminder, you do have to hit send. Even if the uh, receiver is powered down, you hit send, and that basically stores it in the module. And then let's go over to race eight. Actually, hang on. Let's not go to race eight. Let's stay on race one, which is the channel that we were on, and see if we get blasted or not. Oh, we, we did briefly get blasted. Oh, well, I guess it's not as perfect as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Let's go to race eight. We should be on race eight now. <laughs> there we go. We're on race eight. I guess you would want to set the power to off if you wanted to be really sure that you weren't blasting people. Immersion RC. That shouldn't have happened, right? I'm pretty sure that shouldn't have happened. Hopefully they'll fix that. Now, until now, we have been working in the basic 
menu. If I change that option from basic to race, I gain access to a few new options. Now everything you see here works the same as I've been describing. But if we go down to the bottom, there's three new options. On, off, RX loss, and power up. The on off option lets you choose an aux channel, which I'm 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way up through channel uh, 16, I think. And that lets you use that aux channel to switch the video transmitter on or off. This is something many Betaflight flight controllers have built in, a pit switch, um, but this makes it accessible even if your flight controller doesn't have it built in. And instead of literally powering down the whole video transmitter, it just shuts down the actual output circuitry. It's still technically powered up. Uh, the RX loss option controls what the video transmitter will do when you fail safe. So with the RX loss option set to on, the video transmitter will stay on when you fail safe, which might be helpful if you're trying to like track down, oh, where did I go down? Am I in the trees? Am I near that bush? On the other hand, when you're using ghost, I mean, you got pretty good resistance to fail safing, but like maybe your signal wire got cut or something. So you can choose whether to have the video transmitter on or off when you fail safe. And the second option, power up VTX, controls if you power up the quad with the radio turned off, what will happen? Uh, this was requested by some racing pilots who wanted to really just completely eliminate the risk of plugging in and accidentally blasting people. If you set this power up VTX to off, then if the radio is off, and we plug in the quad. Nothing will happen. Until. Welcome to OpenTX. The radio comes on. And then the VTX powers up. So if I go down here in race mode and I set that to power up VTX on. And then again, remember, you always have to go up and send to, to commit all your changes. At that point, if I plug in the quad with the radio off, it'll power up. And that could be useful if you want to like just check your video real quick. Again, it's up to you. If you look through this menu, you will also see the team race option. And as of today, the team race and the race options are exactly identical. Ghost has some features for team racing where you like controlling which quad is powered up and which quad is active. Uh, what Immersion RC has said is that the team race option is going to be rolled into the race option and they're actually going to be the same. So basically just pretend team race doesn't exist and at some point in the future when you're watching this video, it won't exist anymore. The last thing to show you then is how to wire it up and thankfully Immersion RC has some great wiring diagrams on their website. This is an example of a separate ghost receiver and tram nano being wired to an F7 flight controller. Uh, it doesn't actually matter whether it's an F7 or an F4, the wiring is exactly the same. You're going to wire the signal wire to a UART TX pad. And this assumes that you're using SRXL2, but uh, when Betaflight 4.3 comes out, you'll be able to use the ghost protocol instead. Um, the wiring won't change, though. So we're going to have the signal wire going to UART TX and the T telemetry, I've been calling it telemetry, I guess they call it tramp, tramp telemetry, whatever. The tramp wire goes directly to the T telemetry tramp wire on the video transmitter. The only difference if you're working with the ghost hybrid is that this wire connecting the receiver to the video transmitter is inside the ghost hybrid. You don't have to wire it, they're already automatically connected. And if we take a look at the wiring diagram for the Ghost Hybrid, we see almost the exact same thing. There's power, ground, video input, just like you were wiring up any video transmitter. And this is the serial output, and that's going to be the same as this SRXL2 wire or Ghost wire going to UART TX. And then finally, there's this T telemetry wire, and you would only use that wire if you intended to control the video transmitter on the hybrid with your flight controller. So if you wanted to use the VTX tables in Betaflight for some reason, then you would wire this blue telemetry wire to a UART TX on your flight controller and you could manage it with Betaflight. But that kind of kind of defeats the purpose, but it's up to you. And that's going to bring us to the end of the video. I am really, really freaking impressed with what Immersion RC has done with this system. In fact, I thought that they were the first to come up with a system where the video transmitter connects directly to the receiver. I know Crossfire's done that for a while. 
but then you could set a channel band and power and automatically have that be applied to any video transmitter that hooked up. I thought Ghost was the first to do that. I do have to give credit. It turns out that Crossfire has had that function a little bit earlier than Ghost. So cue the TBS fanboys saying Merge RC ripped them off. I'm not here to debate that point. I'm just here to say, I think that's a really cool feature and I'm pretty excited to combine that with the Ghost Hybrid and the Ghost System. I think it's one of the easiest and simplest and potentially safest ways to manage your analog video frequencies. That's gonna do it for this video though. Thank you so much for watching. Happy flying. What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or Join my Patreon or, like, just, here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.